What is a wetland filter? Well, this right here is a wetland filter that we built last year out here in Oakland, Tennessee. And a wetland filter is the most natural way to filter water and gives you crystal clear water, a healthy ecosystem in your pond, and the best option for your fish to have a, a healthy system with clear water that is low maintenance and absolutely beautiful. Not only does it add the, the filtration element that's required in a pond, but it also gives you a fantastic place to do lots of water gardening. And so there are lots of plants that are available to a water gardener to use in the wetland. Most wetlands ideally will have between three to six inches of water on top of the gravel. And so that gives a great place to experiment and to play with all different types of species of plants that you don't normally get to see in a landscape. And those plants also are a vital part of the overall filtration process that's happening in a wetland. All right, so we start by, we dig a hole that is three to four feet in depth. We line the inside of that hole with a rubber liner. It's protected by geotextile fabrics that keep that liner from being punctured. Then we come in and we put in a, some equipment in the bottom of that in order to make sure that we've got even distribution of water as it's coming in from the pumps. On top of that equipment, especially that known as aqua blocks, we stack successively smaller layers of rock and gravel, starting off with cobbles about eight inches in diameter. On top of that, a coarse gravel, and on top of that, a medium to a fine gravel. And so what happens is, as the water comes in, it's pumped in to the bottom, it's percolating up through the, all those layers of rock and gravel, and the beneficial bacteria that we feed into your pond live on the surface area of that rock and gravel. As the water's passing over that surface area, the beneficial bacteria are stripping the high levels of phosphorus and nitrogen out of the water. Well, that phosphorus and nitrogen is what also feeds algae. So rather than trying to trap algae or trying to kill algae, we're actually going to starve algae. We're creating a system that is not conducive to the growth of planktonic algae that would otherwise create what's typically referred to as green water or pea soup looking uh, water in your water garden. So by the time the water makes its way to the top of the water garden uh, wetland, it's clear, it's had the, the food that would otherwise feed your algae stripped out of it, and it's ready to flow into the waterfall. A waterfall is a very important part of the system because that biological process that strips the nitrogen and the phosphorus out of the water also uh, that biological process requires oxygen. It is called an aerobic process, meaning that it requires oxygen. And so it's very important that we follow that wetland filtration with a waterfall. You'll see the same thing in any of our biofalls systems that use a, a mechanical biological filter, such as a biofalls from Aquascape to, uh, to filter that water. You'll find a waterfall afterwards. Not only does it look nice, it is an important part of the process that we re-aerate the water. So, what size should your wetland water filter be? Generally, for most ponds, we're going to recommend a 10 to 15% uh, ratio between your pond and your wetland. That means that your wetland will be about 10 to 15% the surface area of your pond. If you're going to get into a larger recreation pond, then we would recommend having a ratio more like 25 to 30% of your pond surface area should be included in a wetland. So if you have, let's say, 100 square feet of pond for a recreation pond, you're going to want 25 to 30 square feet of surface area in your wetland. All right, so here down at the top surface of your wetland filter, you're going to see that we have this medium to fine gravel right here. And so this is ideal for the top of your wetland. You can even go a little bit finer if you choose. We like this because it's pretty easy to clean and doesn't get real clogged up with detritus uh, between the rocks. You can see we did clean this out this year, but even still, it is, uh, it's in a good healthy, good, healthy place. You can see our plants. This was just planted last year. This rain lily has it may be 10 times the size that it was when we planted it. Very, very happy, doing extremely well. And there are all kinds of plants that are available for you to plant in a wetland. Uh, begonias, ferns, 
uh, all kinds of different water plants, iris, lilies. You can see we've got parrot's feather over here, the canna lilies, pickerel, corkscrew, uh, corkscrew rush, um, lots of different options of things. I've even heard of people planting uh, tomatoes in here. Now the tomatoes will not produce fruit uh, because they do not have enough phosphorus because that's been stripped out by the wetland. But this is the lungs of your system that's going to uh, keep your system healthy and allow it to be the, the cleanest, clearest, low maintenance water. And if you're looking into a recreation swim pond, this is an absolute necessity in order to keep the nasty, bad bacteria that thrive in an anaerobic, a non-oxygenated environment from building up in your water garden. All right, so this is an intake bay, and this is the natural looking version of a skimmer. The, uh, it's a, got a larger capacity for absorbing uh, debris, and you can see this is kind of dirty, but that's because this intake bay is doing what it's supposed to be doing. You can see all this matter here that needs to be cleaned off. This would be cleaned off by our technicians in a regular service uh, visit. But uh, so this is acting as a skimmer and this whole area right here is able to take in water to our pumps and it's keeping this debris from accessing and clogging the pumps. It's also keeping this debris from making its way into the wetland where it could potentially clog up our wetland over on the other side there. So this is our intake bay. It has to be properly sized so that it can handle the flow that is necessary to keep the pumps running without uh, starving them. This particular one was done in such a way that the majority of our flow comes across the surface, but it's able to take in flow even from deep. So if tragically, for whatever reason, uh, this pond was empty of water, it would still be able to continue to draw water in through the face of the intake bay down underneath the water um, without uh, starving the pumps of water. So this is a, a much more elaborate version of a skimmer. Uh, this is very important if you are wanting to your fish to be able to breed and to have babies because this will allow those young fry to be able to swim in and swim back out without getting caught in a skimmer as that is one of the drawbacks of having a skimmer is that you, it is possible to lose uh, small fish in it. I've even seen large fish in them. As you can tell, uh, this client um, loves her fish and so we wanted to make sure that we uh, had an option here for them that could handle lots of flow from the pump as well as protecting her fish and keeping the pond nice and clean. Hey guys, if you like today's content, please be sure to like and subscribe for more about water gardens and other things just like this.